Well, Madam Foreign Minister, thank you for your time. My pleasure. It's, it's, good, it's good to see you. Um, your government has acknowledged that North Korea is at the verge of complete nuclear abilities. At the same time, you put a lot of faith in sanctions mm -hmm. and that that will force change in the North. What, mm -hmm. what gives you that belief that you can force change? Well, the, the sanctions are, 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 are designed to put pressure on North Korea to change course. And it's not just one sanctions. It's now a series of nine UN Security Council sanctions that are obligatory for all member states of the UN to implement. And I do believe that the accumulative effects of these sanctions are, are beginning to be felt and visible and by North Korea's own admission. Um, so th the more they provoke, the international community has been very clear in saying this is unacceptable. Uh, North Korea will never be acknowledged as a nuclear power. And unless, if they continue to provoke and, and continue down that path of uh, uh, the nuclear capabilities and, and their aspiration to become a nuclear weapons state, the international community will continue to put further pressure, further sanctions on North Korea. And I think uh, the, the effects are now uh, are real. Well, and I want to ask you about those effects. Uh, the pace of missile tests seems to have slowed down, mm -hmm. at least in, in the last month or so. Do you believe that is a direct result of the sanctions? Well, I think the message is getting through. Um, yes, we have had this period of over 45, 46 days of non-provocation uh, by North Korea. There are many ways to read this. One way is to uh, say that the message is finally getting through. Another way to read it is they are using this lull to fine-tune some technical aspects of what further provocations that, might, uh, that they might uh, um, uh, undertake. And we're, the, the um, further provocations are always possible. And so we're watching very closely. But certainly this period of lull uh, gives us an indication that North Korea is also recalculating. The United States considers war an option, not a good option, but it, it holds that out there. Does your government hold war as an option? War, another war on the Korean Peninsula must not happen. We're very clear on that. And therefore, a resolution to the North Korean nuclear issue must be pursued in a peaceful diplomatic matter. This is a country that grew out of the total devastation of the Korean War, and over a matter of six, seven decades, we've become a thriving democracy, a vibrant democracy, and a, and a thriving market economy. The idea that another war could wipe that out is just unimaginable. Um, we cannot have another war on the Korean Peninsula. The discussion about military options, I think you need, we need to be very careful about military options as going down the military road and military options as something to reinforce the deterrence. We're very clear our proposal to resolve this in a peaceful manner is based upon an overwhelming military capability. Uh, the combined defense uh, ca capacity between the U.S. forces here and our own forces is, is a very strong and robust one, ready to meet any any contingency that the North Koreans might uh, provoke. So we speak about diplomacy and a peaceful resolution to this based upon a position of strength. And that position of strength includes a robust military preparedness. And I think, though, we need to be clear about what we mean when we say military options. Military options are there to give strength to diplomacy. And I think. We were very clear about this, uh, our colleagues, uh, my counterparts um, in, the, in the U.S. administration are also very clear about this. President uh, Trump has, has used some, some rhetoric that probably is not what you as a, a diplomat would use, um, fire and, and, and fury, locked and loaded. Are those things helpful? Do you, do you wince when you hear them? Well, I think it's an indication of his strong, strong desire to come to terms with this, to resolve this once and for all. Uh, I think we should take his statements not on a day-to-day -day basis, but overall. Um, and the overall, the message is, uh, again, one of, uh, 
one of strength and one of uh, a, a great desire to bring North Korea to the negotiation table to start uh, talking denuclearization. But of course, uh, you know, they need to stop the provocations. They need to give a clear indication that they are serious about a change, of course. So far, we've not seen that. But we're, we're thinking and we're hoping that the, the, the cumulative effects of the sanctions will eventually force North Korea to change course. President Trump uh, will get to see this huge city of Seoul and see what is at risk if, if there is war. Is it important for him to come here to see that? Do you think it might change his opinions? Oh, I think it's always uh, an eye-opening experience to go to where things are happening. And when we talk of the North Korean missile uh, and uh, nuclear threat, this is, this is the front line. This is ground zero when we discuss this uh, challenge, which is now a global security challenge that all uh, around the globe are concerned. So I think it would be, it would be hugely helpful. Uh, I think it will open his eyes. He's been here as, as, as a businessman, to, but to come here as the President of the United States to go see the U.S. forces working together with Korean forces uh, in Camp Humphrey, and then also to speak to the Korean people directly. He has a speaking engagement at the National Assembly, uh, which I think will be a, a milestone event. Um, in spelling out his vision directly to the, the, the people of, of South Korea, but also uh, some very strong messages to North Korea. President Moon has been very clear that there should be no uh, military action on this peninsula without the consent of the South Korean government. The U.S. is looking at Kim Jong-un producing ICBMs, long-range missiles capable of striking perhaps the United States. So. Is, is it reasonable for South Korea to ask that it has to come, it has to be permissible? It, anything that involves the security of the Korean Peninsula has to be consulted and discussed and agreed with us. Uh, and I, we're very clear about that and our American counterparts are also very clear about that. Whatever is decided, whatever is acted upon will have implications for us. And therefore, the idea that some kind of, any kind of a military action can be taken without uh, going through us or consulting us without our consent is, is unthinkable. And we are assured that uh, from our American counterparts that indeed uh, the, the, uh, the, on any security issues, uh, there will be close consultations. Is a stalemate possible here? Is it, could, could could the peninsula, could the United States, North Korea, could they go with the status quo? Mm -hmm. I think the, the, um, the goal of the international community is complete, verifiable, irreversible denuclearization of North Korea. That is not just our goal or the U.S. ROK goal. It is the goal of China. It is the goal of Russia, Japan. The whole of the international community as spelled out in the successive Security Council resolution. So the idea that somehow we would stand still and just leave that goal aside is, is I don't think, doable at this point when we have the whole of the international community very much engaged on this issue. So how do you get there? I mean, there, there are two schools of thought, one that Kim Jong-un, this is all about survival. The other, that this is a, a negotiating ploy. Which do you see it as? It's probably both, um, I and mean, there's many different ways to read North Korea's intention, and I think there's a grain of truth in all of them. But in the end, uh, it must understand that the international community will not let it become a nuclear weapons state. But uh, isn't, all, isn't it already a nuclear weapons state? It has nuclear capabilities. Um, not yet a full-fledged nuclear weapons state, um, and how long will it take to reach that and when will it declare that is also a, a, a matter of much analysis and, and differing views. But however we manage, uh, we must first of all manage the situation here uh, very carefully because we don't, what we want to avoid is some accident growing out of, getting out of control and becoming a, a major, major clash. Uh, so carefully managing the day-to-day -day developments um, 
in close collaboration uh, with the U.S. based upon our alliance posture is the one thing that we do and we need to continue to do on a day-to-day -day basis. We need to pull all the messaging that we can muster among all of the countries in the region, not just the U.S., Korea, Japan, but also China and Russia, consistently sending the message to North Korea that they cannot continue on this road and they will be stopped. And I think the sanctions are now making that point felt very, uh, very, very, not just visibly, but really um, to North Korea. President Trump has warned about talk of appeasement toward North mm -hmm. Korea. So, so what are you willing to offer North Korea to get them to denuclearize? Mm -hmm. Well, certainly this is not appeasement. Um, when we say to every provocation, further pressure and sanctions, but if you change course, there is a better road. And that's, that's the basic premise of our message. That there is a better road will be on offer should they change course and come to the table. Uh, in the first instance, they have to stop the provocations. And they have to somehow indicate a clear change in attitude and direction. What that would be and how then we, we, we would um, pull it into the negotiation table is very much under discussion uh, at my own government, but also in close consultation with, uh, with our American counterparts. My understanding, there's no formal negotiation underway right now, but are there conversations? Are there back-channel conversations? Is there anything happening right now that could begin to reduce the tensions? Not much, not much, um, which is why, you know, we, you know, the, um, there's, there have been some, I think, uh, contacts um, f uh, on the issue of the detainees, especially around the release of Mr. Warmbier, uh, which was a great tragedy. And, uh, but, and, but I think not much at this point, uh, as far as I can understand. And, of course, we do share whatever we know and we have vis-a-vis -vis North Korea with our um, uh, American partners there. And, our American counterparts also do that. But currently, not much, very little. And certainly the North Koreans have not indicated any serious desire to come to the table to discuss denuclearization. Your country hit a diplomatic bump in the road with China over U.S. THAAD missile system that was installed here. That seems to have been healed now. Mm -hmm. um, was, was the ticket to getting that healed, was it... Um, changing your relationship with the United States in any kind of way? No, no, no. I think, you know, on the THAAD issue, we're very clear. It's, a, it's an alliance decision uh, based upon our security need uh, to protect our people and the American forces here uh, in the face of this growing nuclear and missiles threat from North Korea. And we've been very consistent on that. And we've uh, been in discussion with the Chinese to spell that out and to it tell the Chinese that this is in no way aimed at China, that this is in no way designed to somehow undermine China's uh, security, strategic interest. Um, that discussion with the Chinese have sort of, you know, we've been talking past each other for, for the past one year. But I think about since about two months ago, at least there was acknowledgement that the current situation is not a good one neither for Korea nor for China, and then uh, we could start the discussion. If you read the, the, what came out of that consultation, it's called a, um, it's not an agreement, it's the result of consultations. And it basically spells out our mutual positions that China is still uh, very much against this, that. We spell, we spell out our position on this. But the one point of agreement at the end of this is that we both agree that we need to move beyond this situation and to get bilateral exchanges, economic co cooperation, people-to-people -people exchanges back on the road to normalization. What are you hoping that President Trump can, can come away from a visit mm -hmm. in, in South Korea? I think uh, first certainly um, you know, uh, uh, an assurance of the alliance commitment from our side. What we want from the president is assurance of his commitment to the alliance. And I think we, we, we are you know, working very closely with his team, our team here, 
to make sure that his messaging is right on the point on that fundamental point, but also that uh, the, uh, the approach to the North Korean nuclear issue is one ultimately geared toward a diplomatic and a peaceful resolution to this. Uh, I think for Mr. Pre uh, Mr. Trump himself to get a sense, a feel for um, the Korean public uh, through his many meetings here, certainly my president, but also his engagement at the National Assembly, the, the huge importance of the Korea-U.S. alliance that has sustained the peace and stability on the Korean Peninsula, uh, but also Northeast Asia for the past six decades plus, and how that alliance uh, has now enabled this, uh, this very vibrant democracy and an economy to flourish. As President Trump's, uh, have some of his more provocative statements raised the level of, of anxiety in this country? Well, I think, yes, I think, uh, yes, to a certain extent. But I think, as I said, it's you, we read as policymakers and implementers not the one message is the, the message of the day, but the overall uh, tone and the policy that comes uh, from Mr. Trump and my colleague, Mr. Tillerson, Mr. Mattis, uh, and Mr. McMaster, who advise Mr. Trump on, on the North, uh, on the North Korean nuclear issue, but also on, on U.S. relations with uh, South Korea and Korean Peninsula issues in general. You think the United States is committed to diplomacy? Yes, I think so. All right. What is your, uh, uh, we, we mentioned it, it can't, <clears throat> excuse me, in your view, it can't be open-ended. Um, it can't be a stalemate. How much time do you, do we have mm -hmm. to, to solve this crisis? Well, some say in 2018, others have other, um, other, other date point. But I think we all know that the North Koreans are fast approaching uh, that stated goal. Um, their capabilities have advanced much faster than um, many, most have expected. So it's, it's fast approaching, but exactly when, I think, is, is, uh, is a diverse view on that. And, and I want to just go back to that question I asked earlier. Uh, the president is going to come to Seoul, mm -hmm. this, this massive city here, mm -hmm. sitting at the edge of, of, of North Korea. What impact do you think that will have on him? Well, I think... I think he will certainly have a feel for the expectation of the, the Korean people uh, that we have built from, with the support of the Americans, with the alliance being our solid security foundation, that here is a country that, that, that Americans can be very proud of, uh, of the fact that you came and helped us and basically fought with us to, to save us from, from the... Uh, from the aggression, and based upon that investment, um, you still have forces here. Um, you, you have a country that is now a model citizen and a unique success story um, uh, post World War II, uh, model citizen at the UN. We are very close um, uh, partners uh, with the United States in all manner of global issues on counterterrorism, on public health, on global health issues. So to, I think President Trump will be assured that in South Korea, uh, the U.S. not only has a, uh, an alliance that keeps growing and getting stronger, but a partner uh, that the United States can trust on, on an any number of these global um, issues. This, this administration was propelled into office on a pledge of America first. Did that make South Korea nervous? Does it still make South Korea nervous? Well, I think every U.S. administration put, wants to find the right phrasing for how it positions itself in the, the global scheme of things. And, and this is certainly Mr. Trump's uh, um, phrase. But the, I don't think it's entirely new. Um, I think it's just uh, one way, uh, perhaps, of underscoring um, America's interest uh, in this. Uh, but it's not you know, America alone alone. It's America working with other countries. Uh, if you read further his statement in the, in the uh, General Assembly at the UN, it's, 
yes, America first, but also America working with other countries to deliver on the, the common goods that the global community needs to protect and promote. Is there anything I didn't ask you that you'd like well, to Well, I'd about? like to yeah. say something about the Pyeongchang Olympics. Yes, I was going to ask you about that. Thank you. Yes. Well, this is a, a global sports festival that um, we are hosting 30 years after we successfully hosted the Summer Olympics in 1988. It takes uh, place um, at, a, at a point in the northern part of the country. Um, I've just heard somebody uh, reporting back from a recent tour that the facilities are absolutely magnificent, all finished. When we throw a party, we know how to throw a party, as, as, uh, as I'm sure many of our, our friends overseas will know. Uh, software, hardware, all uh, uh, very well prepared. I do know that the, uh, there are talks about the North Korean uh, nuclear and missiles issue being of a security concern. And I can assure you that on that front, um, as I said, we are ready for any contingency, any possibility based upon our very robust defense, combined defense posture. And uh, we will be fully prepared uh, to deal with any security incidents, big or small. And uh, we welcome the world to this uh, global F peace festival. Yeah, as you noted. Um there are a few European countries that have begun to raise a, a few concerns. Are you worried that as we get closer, countries may put up the, the caution sign? Well, not at, at the official level. Every time there's a report of some country raising some issue, we go and check with the, the government authorities and not at the government level. At the public level, of course, there, there can be all kinds of views expressed. But my interlocutors all say they're coming en masse to celebrate this event with us. Of course, having North Korea there will be an, an element of assurance. They have uh, qualified they a couple of qualified athletes. They have qualified for they're gonna uh, pair skating. Um, they had also indicated um, a desire to participate in the Paralympics. Um, and you know, the, uh, the uh, Olympic Winter Olympics is in February and the Paralympics are in March. Uh, beyond that indication of interest in coming, they've not taken any steps, but the IOC for the Olympics and the International Paralympics Committee for the Paralympics are very much engaged on this issue and, and wanting to find a way to help North Korea come to the Games. Okay. Well, we'll stop there. Thank you very much. Thank you. Hey, NBC News fans, thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking on that button down here and click on any of the videos over here to watch the latest interviews, show highlights, and digital exclusives. Thanks for watching.